Woodstock and went to that festival. It was really great. How about you? Hello? Hi, Mr. Davis. Hello, Jenny. I'm in your class again, Mr. Davis. Wasn't the ones enough? Sorry, fellas, gotta go. Oh, come on, Mr. Davis. We're working out there. Maybe tomorrow. Say by the bell. Oh, Mr. Davis, thank you for coming. From the Board of Education, Mr. Cargill. Hi. I'm glad to see you. And Mr. Willis. Oh, dear. Let's oh. see now. It must be eight or nine years since I saw you. The all-pro game when I was in New York. Sit down, gentlemen, please. <laughs> Tell me, Mr. Davis, do you know Lafayette High School? Downtown? Yeah. It's a fine physical plant, and the board thinks you'd be very good there. But I've sort of settled in here. I know, it's rewarding here, but it can be rewarding there, too, if we promoted you to, say, vice principal. But I like teaching. You could still have a couple of English classes. Mr. Cargo, may I ask you a question? Why are you being so good to me? Well, to be frank with you, we have a situation down at Lafayette. They've reapportioned the district and they transferred 200 white students in there. First time in five years. 200 white kids and 3,000 black, huh? They're already a day late in opening. Gentlemen, I can't say I don't know what you're talking about. But it seems to me that what you need is a professional disciplinarian. Not an English teacher. I think I better pass. Mr. Moglin, I understand you have a new science lab. I'd like to see it. Yes, yes, of course. Excuse us, gentlemen. Quincy, you don't want to go back there, do you? Why? I already told you why. I wonder if there isn't another reason. I don't have to give you all my reasons. Sure you don't, especially the real one. All right. I don't want to go back to the ghetto. It took me 20 years to claw my way out of there. So what do I want to go back for? We need you down there. They need me here. These kids never see a black face. Do you? Hell. White man makes it, nobody comes running, asking him to go back. White man goes, he's gone. You're not a white man. So? How far would you like to make it? Principal? Big wheel downtown? Maybe. You buck the Board of Education now and you'll never get anywhere. They'll freeze you in your tracks. Like I said, they need you down there. Not here. to 
gonna take me a big lick. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of them niggas gives me any crap, I'll lay them out. You do that, Leaky. Until it's our token whiteies. Honkies with their wrinkly white asses. I thought they'd be too hungry. Where's the rest of them? Here's the rest of them. Well, how'd they get out? How? Some moved, some went to private school. Some kid suddenly came down with heart trouble and can't travel. Would you believe 27 requests for classical Greek? <laughs> well, these get washed up on the show. I suppose their parents couldn't find an escape hatch. Maybe some of them didn't want to. Well, those were trying, but in the last couple of years, everything's become so... It's complicated down here. That's why I asked for, for someone like you. I know you didn't like it, but... Why, well, Mr. Justin? I knew you would. And frankly, I'm sure there's going to be a learning experience for both of us. However, in order to teach, we have to stabilize things. Stabilize? Well, as vice principal, your main job is to prevent trouble. Keep the lid on, as it were. After all, we don't want the stew boiling all over the stove. But isn't that more likely to increase pressure? I mean, maybe there are other ways. Look, Mr. Davis, let's be practical. We have a school to run, and I think it's best if we let the rules guide us. But we also have to teach. Of course. And in order to teach, we have to prevent trouble. Let that be understood, Mr. Davis. Well, I understand. It's your school. I don't think I'm gonna like it here. Hey, what do you know? A, A, B, A, B, A. All A's and B's. Doug, baby. You must have kissed a lot of behinds. You got a big mouth, don't you, Leek? I never got an A or B in my whole life. Beautiful, beautiful. I don't think I'm gonna like it here. Look, why don't you wait and see, huh? Hey, don't tell me you wanna be here. 
Look, I'm not knocked out about it, but I'm going to make the best of it. Look, no diploma, no college. I'm not going to be punching a machine like my old man all my life. How come you couldn't get out? Well, my parents tried. But there were too many uh, Caucasian transfers already. The Board of Education put the brakes on. Yeah, well, we're all in that bag. Stuck. <laughs> This here fountain's for blacks only. Yours is in the back. Your eye on that one. J.T. Watson. No good. Well, I want to thank you all for letting me take a part of your lunch hour. Sure, I haven't covered everything. Whatever I've left out was no accident. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> any rate, we'll be going over all this again in greater detail before I start giving you orders. Thank you very much. I'm Rita Monaghan, history. Good to have you with us. Thank you. We need dedicated black men like you down here. It's very important. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me, how are the kids taken to history? Not bad. As long as you don't, uh, oh, how shall I put it, make excessive demands on them. Still, you make no demands. You... That's very good. But before the Negro can enter the mainstream and gain upward mobility, he must have war. Tell him how sympathetic you are to the black problem later, Rita. Excuse me. Ivan Fowler, civics. Hello, Fowler. How are things going? Well, it's always been tough to teach at Lafayette. Now with the white kids. Yeah. Frankly, I'm afraid the place is going to explode. Uh, now he's going to explode, Fowler. Harry Grickle. Hello. What the problem? Well, you might say I teach conduct. I'm the security guard here. Hey, Harry. Better be careful how you handle that thing. You might shoot your pecker off. Or, or, or. Now, you're a real riot, McKay. Or shouldn't I say riot? <laughs> sure. Ernie McKay, head jockstrap. I could tell. Yeah. 